Please raise your questions if you have, um, please raise your hand if you have any questions or ready. Let's go ahead and start with uh, Mason. Hi, Vinny. This is Mason from the Esports Sesh podcast. I just wanted to know, you've fought for a very long time now and you've had plenty of wins throughout your career. What would a PFL title mean to yourself? I mean, that's like my third shot, right? So uh, it does mean a lot. It means a lot. It's uh, pretty much what I said, like in a, my second season competing for PFL. At this point, it's not even about the money. It's uh, it's pretty about the title. It's been the same way since like the second season. Of course, like, you know, $1 million, it's a, a decent amount of money. It's not an amount of money that's going to, like, last for your whole life. Of course, if you make the right investment, you could last for your whole life, you know. But uh, it's really not about the money at this point. Uh, that's my third shot. I feel like I'm mean, getting, like, getting close, like, to, like, you know, stop fighting. It's not like I'm playing on it, but I just feel like I'm not going to be one of those guys fighting some 40, 42. And then, uh, so the window's closing. So like, I feel like that's one of like my last opportunities and uh, I want to get the best of it. And how is life in the PFL bubble been for yourself? <laughs> that's a good question. It's, a, it's a, again, like for me, it's not a, the first time being like trapped in the place. You know, I was an only fighter for six weeks with like a bunch of dudes, guys that I had to fight. You know, I'm pretty much like sharing like a bathroom with the guys that I had to fight. And um, it, it was a little bit easier back then because I didn't have family. I was a single guy, like, you know, no family, like in the States, period. Like, you know, no wife, no kids. And uh, years later now, I have like my kids, I have my wife. So it's tough to be away from the family. But uh, overall, you know, we were able to manage all the training here. I got good training, like, during the period. So, like, I can't complain. It's been good, you know. Uh, I've been able to, like, keep my diet on track. I was be I was able to like do my two three sessions a day while like in a bubble, so it's it wasn't that bad. It wasn't that bad at all. Thank you for your time and uh, can't wait to see you fight come Thursday night. I uh, can you repeat that one? I I just wanted to say thank you for your time and I can't wait to watch you come Thursday night. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> Up next, let's go with Drew Pierce. Hey, Vinny. Drew Pierce, FightLeague.com. Do you think having, you know, the experience you have in PFL gives you any sort of edge over the competition, especially those who are just now making their promotional debut? Uh, I feel like just the experience overall, like sometimes it gives us a certain advantage. You know, like I don't get nerves anymore, like on fight week. I don't get nerves anymore, like preparing for a fight, even though for this one, I had like literally like four weeks to train for, uh, which is probably like my shortest training camp in, like in my career. But uh you know, I don't, I don't feel like as far as the, the, the promotion itself, it doesn't give me any advantage, especially because this year the format has changed, you know. Um, on the previous seasons, pretty much if you scored a first round win, what six points are you guaranteeing yourself in the playoffs? It, that's just how it went. Like, you know, this year is completely different. You could get six points. Uh, if everybody else gets six points now, you know, things are a little bit tighter compared to like... Uh, what it was like in the previous season, only four guys qualified this year to the playoffs. So things are gonna be a little more difficult, you know. Uh, one thing though, like, you know, in the last card, it had like a bunch of decisions. So for guys like myself, who are, are normally like going for finishes, uh, that might give us some edge. But uh, as far as experience, I don't know. It all, it all depends on like, if you look at like the, the roster this year, a lot of guys have like a ton of experience, like special like in big promotions. So, I don't know. If you count my fights on, on tough, like I have 35 fights, so I'm probably one of the guys that have the most amount of fights besides maybe Kamozi. I don't know how many fights he's had, but he has a ton of fights too. So uh, I'm one of the most experienced guys. So that gives me a little edge just because I just feel comfortable now fighting, you know. Some guys just feel like feeling really nervous, like on fight week, you know, my opponent has like what, like 11, 12 fights. I'm sure that for him, like, you know, it's got to be like a rough week. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Up next, Dylan. Hey there, Benny. How's it going? Right, pretty good. Pretty good. I'm just kind of curious because, you know, the last time I'm seeing you've competed in MMA was October 2019, but keeping active on the submission underground circuit as of late. Like, how do you feel getting back to a competitive MMA framework here? 
Well, you know, like uh, I've been begging for uh, my manager to give me fights like through this whole period, you know, like for me, uh, I was just trying to stay busy with grappling. As a matter of fact, that's what I was getting ready for. That's why I was a little bit heavier and everything over the last few weeks, because like I was planning uh, on competing in Jiu Jitsu tournaments since I didn't have anything contract for to fight MMA. But since last year, I was asking my manager to give me a fight. I want to fight, you know, I've been ready to fight, like I would say since my last one. Uh, I was not with PFL. I didn't have a contract with PFL. So for me, it was looking to fight anywhere. Not ready to get any, like, locked in any contract. I really just wanted to be a free agent, getting fights as much as I could. Unfortunately, things didn't happen. But fortunately, I got I got back with PFL, which is like a promotion I have always, you know, liked fighting for since, like, World Series days. And then uh, it's good to be back. You know, even though it was, like, the four weeks thing, it's still good to be back. Yeah, and you touched on it, too, with the long history in the promotion. And you've had a good couple runs in the tournament structure, even getting to the finals in 2018 there. I'm kind of curious, is there a level of redemption heading into this upcoming season here, or is it just like a clean slate? You're not looking at the prior season backdrop there. Uh, like, like I was just saying, you know, it's a different format this year. Uh, for me, like, you know, PFL, it's that thing. You're not just going fight for fight. You're, you have to, right? Like got to focus like uh, each fight at a time. But uh, you're not here just to fight and see how it goes. Like, you know, you really think about like the, the big prize. And uh, like I was just saying, like a couple of questions ago, like uh, for me, like, you know, I don't have, I'm not one of those guys. I don't have like 10 years of like fighting anymore. So for me, it's like, you know, every opportunity that I have, like I got to get the best of it. And uh, so I feel like that's my shot. You know, like I would say that winning like this season, I will have to like think if I'm going to go for another one, if I'm going to stop fighting. It's one of those things I don't have any reason to stop fighting. I feel like healthy, like, you know, I'm feeling good, like physically, mentally and all that. But uh, I just, I'm not, just not one of those guys that plan on fighting until like I'm 42, 45. It's just not my thing. And you know? I got to think of like my brain health too. It's not, it's not just about like being like physically fit and things like that. You know, I got my kids and I want to like enjoy time with them too. And uh, when I'm in training camps, really rough like to, to, spend time with the family. So I'll do as much as I can, but I'm not going to be there for much longer. So every return that I have with PFL, it's always, man, hey man, I make that one million. Let's see how it goes. Maybe go for another one, but most likely if it's maybe one, maybe two, and then I'm done. Awesome. Thanks for the time, man. Oh, thank you. Let's go with Alex, Gucci Press. Hi, Benny. It's Alex from KTI Press. I was just wondering if you had the chance to see your former Ultimate Fighter cast mate Tom Waller in the uh, hotel at all. We actually have been uh, sharing like uh, the workout room sometimes. Me and Tom, like, we're good friends. So that's a fight that I want to make sure if it, you know if it, it has to happen, like it's got to be in the final. You know yeah. that I don't want to fight Tom. He doesn't <laughs> want to fight me. We are good friends. It's not just like we just not just know each other. We are good friends. Awesome and good luck. Thank you. And kick audio. All right. Hey, how's it going, Vinny? This is Steve from Head Kick Audio. On my show, I interview a lot of fighters. And outside the bubble, it seems like you've been getting a lot of work with a lot of fighters. Uh, that leads me to my question for you is uh, what kind of adjustments and new looks are you getting that you think are going to help you through this tournament? Well, as far as the adjustments, you no, know, like I don't try to keep secrets. There's no secrets. Of course, like you know, I always try to improve like the the things that I'm not that good at, or maybe not as good as as my jiu-jitsu. With that's always my number one thing. Everybody knows there's no secret about that. But uh, you know, of course, trying to improve like my striking, my wrestling. I feel like the main thing that people overlook sometimes. It's a, everybody talks about striking. For me, I feel like people overlook the red the wrestling part of it because I feel like. I don't have to land those punches, if I, but if I can make my wrestling work once the fights are on the ground, like uh, as you guys see, like I'm most of the time finishing the fights. So I've definitely been trying to improve my wrestling. Uh, condition is the thing, you know, like it's like if once it starts to wrestle, like, you know, if you fail those takedowns, uh, you start to get tired, then uh, things usually go really bad like your way. So uh overall game and you know, all, like I got to improve and including my jiu-jitsu, you know, I got to just make it more efficient and um, but, you know, a whole year that he had, like, that nobody fought, like, especially people that were already like, on the contract with PFL. Uh, I was in a different situation. I didn't have a contract. I, you know, I was trying to get fights. So I was training. I was uh, trying to improve my game. 
And I don't know what I'm gonna bring. I gotta get a real fight. And uh, on Thursday, I'm gonna get a real fight. And I'm gonna see like where I'm at, you know, when it comes down to like a fight. Uh, as far as training, I've been feeling pretty good. I feel like everything has improved over time. But uh, things are completely different when you're actually looking at a real situation. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you. Tanai. Hey, Vinny. Tanai from MMA Island. How's it going, man? Doing pretty good. Pretty good. So I asked Jordan the same question. You obviously have 16 submissions and Jordan has nine in, in his MMA career. To be fair, he said that you have the better jiu-jitsu game, but he also said that you, he has the better overall game. What do you think? Who has a better ground game and overall game? Yeah, I, I don't want to be like, I don't want to be rude, but like, you know, of course I have the better jiu-jitsu game. It's not even like comparable, but uh uh, it's funny to say the overall game. It's it's just ridiculous when people come up like, well, you know, if I, Vina have the over, overall game, it's it's easy to say that. What are they going to say? They're going to just make themselves like sound stupid saying that they have the better jiu-jitsu game. They won't say that, right? So they have to say, oh, they have the overall game. How many people has ever knocked down? I have watched these fights. I've never seen knocking down anybody or knocking down anybody, right? I do have like three knockdowns uh, plus... I think like four uh, TKO or KO finishes, he has none. Uh, there have been fights that have like dropped people with uh, with punches and then I finished with submission, two of them actually. So it, it's one of those things, yeah, like, you know, Vinny is a jiu-jitsu guy. No, Vinny is not a jiu-jitsu guy. Vinny is just a better jiu-jitsu guy than I am. So I have to that I have something else to beat him. And that's pretty much the same talk that I've been hearing like through my whole career. Sounds good, man. Can't wait to see you guys go after it on Thursday. Good Thank luck. Thank you. Thank you. Mike Owens. Hello, Vinny. This is Michael from Mike Owens Media. You've had eight. eight. I'm, I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. How are you? Pretty good. Pretty good. Superb. 18 of your 19 wins have come via stoppage. And as you mentioned, there's been some changes in the PFL tournament formula. Do you feel any extra pressure to go out and get a finish on Thursday night? I mean, like, it, it's just in my style. Like, I'll try to look for a finish. Uh, I have won, oh, I think, believe like maybe two fights. I have won one fight by decision. Like it happens to be the one that I won, like with striking. But uh, it's just not my my way, like to to fight. And I'm always chasing the finish. Uh, it's it happened like a few times, like by uh, to, like striking, uh, mostly by submission. And that's just the way I like. It's just like it's an overall thing that's better. You know, it saves your energy. Like avoids like. But it doesn't like allow it to take much like punishment. Like you don't have to do a lot of like damage to your opponents either. Not like I care about my opponents, but it's just the whole thing. You know, it keeps you fresh, so it can get ready for the next one. As far as the PFL, uh, in five weeks or five and a half weeks, you're gonna have to be coming back, and I can do another fight, right? So uh, going for a finish is always important. So you can just get back home, like maybe take one or two days to rest and get back in the gym. So. Uh, it's just not my thing to have to go like three or three rounds, two or three rounds, because it's uh, it could master up for your next fight, especially in this kind of format, and uh, it, keep, it could keep you out of the gym for like a week or maybe two, it depends if you get any kind of like serious injury, and that's not going to be good for the, the rest of the season. So I'm always going to keep chasing like a finish. You know, it's either if it's either a knockout or a submission, uh, I don't know. You'd always like try to like look for whatever's available for you, but. Uh, you know, it's just my style. It's been like, even if it wasn't like in a PFL format, that would always be my style. Great. Good luck for Thursday. Thank you. Breeze? Hey, Vinny, it's Breeze with the MMA Breeze. I wanted to ask, you know, you touched on it a little bit before, but with grappling getting so popular these days and all the platforms like Submission Underground and Who's Number One, after your, your fighting career, do you see yourself competing and grappling for a long time uh, to come? Or will we see you kind of just take a back seat and, uh, and just stay in the gym? I, I don't know. I'm a competitor. To be honest, uh, I had a, like a little downtime last year. Uh, I was trying to get fights. You know, that's one thing that really gets me motivated. The only thing that keeps me like three times a day in the gym is uh, if I'm training for a fight, a fight, an MMA fight. If it is grappling, uh, I just don't have the same drive anymore. You know, uh, a good thing when I got the call from uh, from Ray Self like for this fight is that I was getting ready to get a rematch against Gordon Ryan uh, in the end of May. So I was training. You know, I was uh, you know doing strength conditioning. I was uh, grappling like every night. So I was training. Uh, I was I would go to extreme to in Spark like maybe like once or twice a week. So I was doing some training, but it's it's different. I don't have the same drive. 
So for me, like in order for me to stay in the gym after I'm done fighting, uh, it's going to be tough. I, I will have to compete, of course. Otherwise, I'm not going to go to the gym at all. I might just do like in, in order to stay healthy, but it's not going to be like two, three times a day. You know, for me, you know, I got to a point that if I'm in the, if I'm in, uh, I am in the gym, it is to like, you know, for a goal. It is for a competition. It is to like, you know, get result from something I'm like trained for. Uh, I can't do just for the fun anymore or the fun of it anymore. I would rather spend time with the family, you know, if I have that free time. Awesome. And last for me, you touched on it, uh, Gordon Ryan. He just signed with 1FC. If you had the opportunity to present itself here to, to grapple with him for a contest or to fight him in MMA and welcome him into the, uh, the mixed martial arts round, which would you prefer to do? I, I, again, I was supposed to rematch him like in this May. That was supposed to be for uh, who's number one. Uh, he had a deal like pretty much done. Like he just didn't sign the contract. Because so the day that I was going to sign the contract, that's the day I got the call from Ray. And uh, I didn't even think twice. You know, I was going to get a good amount of money for that rematch. Uh, but uh, it's not even comparable to what I'm getting from PFL. And then again, PFL is not even just about the money. It's uh, That's the only thing that keeps him in the gym. Like training like you know like a professional i cannot train like a professional for grappling anymore i don't have that drive there's no money like for it there's no like i don't have that kind of i mean i don't know those guys that has to win like 10 world titles to like to prove himself i've won atc that's the biggest thing like you can win like in grappling that's like win the olympics right and i'm not one of those guys that need to chase like 10 uh atc medal, gold medals to sit there he's like one of the best i feel like i'm one of the best like even though i won one gold medal and like in four bronze medals it, it's just that's me winning these medals without even training, like nothing but grappling, like most of these guys do. So like I, I'm, I've proven myself as being one of the best. So I don't feel like I have to keep, to keep doing it anymore. So the, the Gordon Rowry match, uh, it kind of gave me some type of incentive, not just because of the money, but also because, well, he's the best guy in the world right now, right now. So I do want to compete against the best guy in the world. But if you're going to give me some random dude just to go against, I'm not going to train for it. <laughs> Awesome. Well, thanks so much, man. Good luck. Thank you. Tariq. How you doing, Vinny? It's Tariq from the Havoc Hour. So you've been a champion in other promotions before we've seen that. And now here in this platform, with having come so close on two separate occasions now, as you said, this is your third chance at it. Do you feel that you have to win it all this season, or do you feel like this is just something you want to accomplish? Uh, I feel like everybody has the mentality that I had to win, and especially if you look at the roster this year, uh, I have a ton of experienced guys that have fought like in big and big promotions, and uh, so everybody has a mentality they feel like they have to win. As a matter of fact, when you're a competitor, if you, they put you like in a bracket, you only see yourself winning. No matter who's around you, no matter who like you're going against, you always believe that you are the best. That's the, the competitive mindset. But uh, as far as me having my third shot, I, I just feel like. When I look like uh, the bracket, I always believe that I have the capability of beating any of these guys. Uh, there's a million, like one of the tough guy, the toughest guys like in the, in the division. Uh, I've gone against him. I had like a horrible performance against him. But of course, if you look at like how he did that season two, he just like smashed everyone and made like it look easy too. So maybe underperformed, maybe he just overperformed. Maybe the guy deserved like everything he got that year. Uh, but uh, it's like when I look around, it, I see Miliana like as one of two, one of the toughest challenges, and uh, but everybody else is the same way, you know. Like everybody believes that they can win too. So I don't feel like I have an obligation, but in my mind, I I do have to win, you know. And that has nothing to do with it because I got so close uh, a couple of times. It's just because the reason I'm here is to win the whole thing. Hey, thanks a lot. Good luck on Thursday. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much. Benny, we'll see you. Uh, we'll see you on Thursday. All right. Appreciate your time. Thank you. I was so thirsty. Like I was, I was so dry.